we continue with our discussion on logic design. This is the third part of our logic design lecture. Now, here the first thing that I would like to talk about is to discuss some kind of special decoder design, but before I go into it let me try to give the motivation. See we talked about the design of decoders. Now, you imagine that you are trying to design a 4 to 16 decoder. Now, if you design 4 to 16 decoder directly using gates not using smaller decoders as we had seen directly using gates, then for every output you need a large gate you need an end gate with 5 inputs. 4 inputs will be some combination of the input variables and 1 for the enable. So, you will be needing 16 AND gates each with 5 inputs. Now, one difficulty in designing circuits is that when the number of inputs of a gate increases it becomes increasingly difficult to design and manufacture those gates. Well, the gates become unreliable, they consume more power, they become slower and there are many drawbacks. So, it is always attempted to keep the number of inputs to a gate as small as possible. So, instead of designing a very large decoder just in one go, it is always better to design smaller decoders and use it to build a big decoder, larger decoder. Like the example we showed that using 2 to 4 decoder we can construct a 4 to 16 decoder. Now, here we show an alternate approach, here also we are trying to build a 4 to 16 decoder, but the approach is different. So, here I am showing the schematic. So, we are using 2 2 to 4 decoders. So, the concept is that I am using a row column concept, there are 4 columns and there are 4 rows. One of the decoder depending on 2 of its inputs will be selecting one of the rows. The other decoder depending on the other 2 inputs will be selecting one of the columns. Suppose you apply w x equal to 1 1 which means the fourth row is selected and if you apply w z equal to 1 0 which means third row is selected. So, it is 1 1 and 1 0. So, this last row and third column means I am referring to this junction. Now, what I do at every junction I connect an AND gate you see every row line and every column line I connect as inputs to an AND gate and the output of the AND gate are my decoder outputs. So, just to imagine here 1 1 and 1 0 will what if it is 1 1 then only the last row will be 1, if it is 1 0 the third column will be 1. Now, if I connect through these two lines and AND gate both of these inputs will be 1 and 1 I have connected this and this. So, the output will also be 1, but for all other AND gates these both inputs will never be 1 at least one of them will be 0. So, all others will be 0 only this will be 1. So, this works perfectly as a decoder depending on what I am applying to the input w x and y z exactly one of the gate outputs is becoming 1 that is my decoder output. Okay. Normally, large decoders are built or constructed using this way because here as you can see the number of gate inputs are all small all 2 input and gates you require. Right. Okay. So, let us move on. So, let us talk about another kind of a special decoder which is uh, sometimes very useful particularly when we work with BCD numbers, uh, we need to use a decoder to identify what decimal digit or BCD digit is that. We need a decoder which is called a BCD to decimal decoder. BCD as you know a BCD is a 4 bit number encoding 
let us say w x y z is a b c d and in a b c d number the valid numbers go from 0 0 0 up to 9. The remaining 6 combinations are considered to be not valid. So, in the output we have only 10 outputs not 16 outputs like in a normal decoder. Depending on whether you are applying one of these, so one of the outputs will be 1. So, again there is an enable. So, the way you construct the decoder is exactly same as a normal decoder let us say this 5, the gate for this 5 what this 5 indicate 5 is 0 1 0 1. So, you will be connecting you see first one you connect uh, uh, enable then you connect uh, x then you connect y bar then you connect z and of course, w bar. So, this way you can connect uh, this inputs in various way and of course, here what final realization we have shown is after minimization because you see in this case among the inputs there are 9 valid inputs and there are 6 do not cares. So, when you do a minimization these do not care inputs also will result in the cancellation of some of the terms. So, I am showing just the final realization okay? I am not showing you the steps of minimization. So, this is another kind of a decoder that we use in some designs BCD to decimal decoder. There is another kind of a decoder which is also very useful. Well, we have also I mean we have all seen this kind of digital displays in many uh, gadgets and places in, a, I mean in our calculators, in our washing machines, in our uh, refrigerators, different places where there are some digital displays that displays that display the numbers are displayed in a very specific way. These are called 7 segment displays. So, how the 7 segment display you see here I have shown a picture of a typical 7 segment display unit. You see in a 7 segment display unit there are 7 lamps which are typically numbered or named as A, B, C, D, E, F, G. By selectively glowing these lamps, you can display any of the digits from 0 to 9. Let us say if you want to display 5, you display these digits, these lamps, this is 5. So, if you want to display 3, you display these. Okay, so, 0 to 9, you can display anything, right. So, basically, the 7 segment display units that we talk about these displays there are 7 display segments that that I have shown here. And the way they are manufactured that can be different they can be manufactured using light emitting diodes, liquid crystal displays, neon lamp or any other technology. So, as I said the examples depending on what digit you want to display the appropriate segments should be activated and they should glow. Okay. So, these displays come in two variety. Let us talk about light emitting diode LED kind of displays. The first variety is the common cathode variety where these 7 segments are actually 7 LEDs or light emitting diodes. They are called common cathode because as the, the cathode terminals of the 7 LEDs are tied together this is the common terminal which you connect to ground and you apply a voltage to the this a b c d f g h input depending on which one you want to glow. Okay. Similarly, you can have a common anode kind of a display unit where the LEDs are connected in reverse order. The anode point is connected together and they are connected to a positive supply voltage. 
and when you want to glow a digit you will have to ground the corresponding input so that a current flows okay now in the example that we will be showing we will be assuming that it is common cathode that means if you want to display a segment you have to apply a high voltage let us say 1 on that line the other side is grounded. So, when you talk about BCD to 7 segment decoder we are talking about a circuit like this. So, we want to design a decoder like this where there will be 4 inputs applied this is our BCD input and 7 segment outputs will be generated which will be connected to the 7 segments of this display A, B, C, D, E, F, G and depending on the BCD input the correct segments will be activated. So, that the corresponding digit blows ok. This is the basic idea. So, the truth table for the BCD to 7 segment decoder looks like this. So, I have also shown a 7 segment display here side by side for reference. Let us say my digit is 0. So, when I want to display 0 other than G all the other segments should glow. So, you see A, B, C, D, E, F are all 1 only G is 0. So, if I want to display 1 only B and C must glow all others should be 0 you see only B and C are 1. For 2 A, B, G, E and C should glow F and C should be off you see for 2 C is off and F is off. So, like this you can display all the digits say for 8 all the segments should glow all are 1. For 9 only E and D should be off for 9 only E and D should be off other should glow. So, it is easy to construct this table right corresponding to the BCD input code. So, exactly how I want to display it. So, you can just activate the segments assuming common cathode display that 1 means it will glow 0 means it will not glow ok. And just from this you can write down the expressions also I have not shown you the exact process of minimization again well I leave this as an exercise for you this is a 4 variable function there are so many do not care states 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 there are 6 do not care states. So, when, when if you I mean when you use a Carnot map you can use this do not care states also for minimization. Let me take one example as an instance sorry yeah. let us take one example let us consider a 4 variable Carnot map let me show you one. x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4 let us say x 1, x 2 is in this direction x 1, x 2 and x 3, x 4 in this direction let us say. So, the inputs are 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0 and 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. Let us take the segment A for example. Uh, okay, segment is many one let us take another let us say segment C c can be minimized let us say c look at the segment c or fine fine a is fine let us take a look at the segment a. So, you see where they are 1 for 0 this is 0 1 2 2 is 0 1 2 is this then 3 3 is also 1 this is 3 4 is 0 5 this is 4, this is 5, uh, 5, 6, 7, uh, 4, 4, 5, 6, 7, this is 7 and 8 and 9, this is 8 and this is 9. This is your uh, Carnot map and in addition there are 6 do not care 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 10 is 1 0. So, I am showing the do not care as x these are all do not cares 
this 6 are do not cares. So, now you will have to just include these ones and go ahead with the minimization. So, you can make the cubes like here uh, the four corners will be a cube, then you can have a cube like this, you can have a cube like this, you can have a cube like this, you can have a cube like this. Like this if you do a minimization, you will be arriving at these expressions. Okay? I am not working out all of them, I leave it as an exercise for you. So, you can actually verify this. Okay? Minimize this and see that whether these expressions are tallying with this. Okay. Let us move on. Next, let us come to a circuit which you can call it is an reverse of the decoder. I call it an encoder. There are many inputs, there are few outputs depending on which input is activated at a time I am assuming only one of the input is active. So, the output will contain the binary code of the input which input that is active. Let us see how it works. So, an encoder will typically have 2 to the power n input lines and n output lines. So, here there is an example for n equal to 3. There are 8 input lines and 3 output lines. So, I am assuming here that only one of the input lines is 1 at a time. Let us say D 3 is 1 the output will contain the binary code of D 3, 3 is 3, so it is 0, 1, 1 that is 3, this will be the output. If D 6 is 1, 6 is 1, 1, 0, so it will be 1, 1, 0 and so on. This is how the encoder will work. So, for a normal encoder, the uh, truth table will look like this. So, in the first case I am if you see here again you need not show all the there are 8 inputs. So, so, there will be 2 to the power 8 possible input combinations. So, you need not show the whole truth table because this is a functional block you can show only the functional rows. The first row says only d 0 is 1, others are all zeros. So, this will mean 0 0 0. If d 1 is 1, 0 0 1, d 2 is 1, 0 1 0 like this, because the other inputs are not valid, they are all do not cares. Okay, now, now, one issue here is that in this kind of an encoder design, that you are assuming that exactly one of the input is at 1. But let us say by accident or otherwise I have also made another input as 1, let us say d 4 is 1, d 0 is 1. So, what will be my output? So, will it be 0 0 0 or will it be corresponding to d 4 1 0 0. So, for the other input combinations where more than one inputs can become 1, there is some ambiguity. So, to remove this ambiguity normally the encoders that we design they are something called priority encoders not a normal encoder like this truth table shows. Now, in a priority encoder the input lines will have some priority like suppose I have said d 0 I have applied 1, d 4 also I have applied 1 and I am saying that the line d 4 is having higher priority than d 0. So, if both of them are 1, d 4 will take priority and the output corresponding to d 4 will be generated 1 0 0. This is how the priority encoder should work. So, for a priority encoder the basic concept is like this let me just repeat. Now, let us put it in the proper context. See a priority encoder or means any encoder circuit 
they are used in application let us say 4 inputs and 2 outputs, they are used in application where some sub circuits or some device or some units they are generating some kind of requests. The input lines are assumed to represent unit that requests some service and the output will indicate that which one of the inputs that the input 0, 1, 2, 3 that are 4 input units which of the inputs have generated the request. Now, in a priority encoder as I said whenever two of the inputs let d i and d j where i is greater than j request service simultaneously then we assume that d i is having higher priority because i greater than j. So, the output will be generating the binary code for the highest priority input that is active. This is how the priority encoder works. Okay. Let us look at the truth table, it will be clear. Think of an 8 by 3 priority encoder, there are 8 inputs, there are 3 outputs. For the first case where only d 0 is 1, others are all zeros. there is no ambiguity, it is 0 0 0. But when d 1 is 1, d 1 has a higher priority than d 0. So, d 0 will be do not care, d 0 can be 0 or 1 does not matter, but d 1, but the rest are zeros, it will be 0 0 1. But when d 2 is 1, the lower priority ones will be do not care, it will only be important the that the higher priority ones are 0 0 0. Similarly, d 3 is 1, lower priorities are all do not care, this is like this. So, the truth table will look like there will be lot of do not care entries here. So, when d 7 is 1 for example, so the other inputs does not influence the output. So, if d 7 is 1 the output will always be 1 1 1 irrespective of the other inputs right. This is how a priority encoder works that means again I leave it as an exercise for you to find out how to generate the expressions. Just here I am showing out the expression for the outputs. So, for this f 2, f 1 and f 0 if you write down the expressions then after minimization the expressions will be like this. So, I leave it as an exercise for you to verify again. So, if you want to implement this using gates you will of course, first we will have to minimize this and then implement these using gates. So, f 2 for example, will require a single OR gate nothing else is required f 2 will require a single 4 input OR gate 4 5 6 7. This f 1 for example, will be requiring 2 AND gates 3 inputs each well of course, here some NOT gates also some are bar are there d 4 d 5 bar and d 6 d 7 are direct. So, there will be an OR gate connect d 6 d 7 will be direct. So, similarly f 0, okay. now let us talk about a circuit element called comparator which is also very important. Sometimes we need to compare the values or the magnitudes of two numbers whether they are equal, whether one is greater than the other or whether one is less than the other this is called a magnitude comparator or a simple comparator digital comparator. So, when you talk about an n bit comparator it basically compares the magnitude of two n bit numbers a and b and there will be three outputs g t equal and less than greater than equal to less than where g t will be set to 1 if and only if a is greater than b in magnitude. E q will be 1 if they are equal, L t will be 1 if A is less than B. This is how the comparator works, right. So, let us take a very simple scenario first, just a 1 bit comparator. So, I want to design a circuit where the two numbers are just 
single bit numbers a and b one bit number and I have my three outputs greater than less than and equal to. Now, obviously, a greater than me b means what for a single bit number that a is 1 and b is 0 this is the only case. So, it will be a b bar a b bar less than b means. So, here also only case only one case a 0 b 1. So, a bar b a bar b an equal case a equal to b you see there can be two scenarios a 0 b 0 or a 1 b 1. This can be expressed as a bar b bar or e b which is nothing but the exclusive nor function symbolically it is written like this exclusive nor if a b are the inputs output will be this equal. Because of this property x nor is basically checking equality of two bits this is sometimes also known as the equivalence function or the equivalence gate x naught is sometimes also known as equivalence gate. Okay, one bit comparator is very easy to design. Let us look into larger size comparators, let us say two bit comparator. Here I am assuming that the numbers are two bits a 1 a 2 is one number b 1 b 2 is another number and I want to generate the three outputs. You see let us construct the Carnot map this a 1 a 2 along this side b 1 b 2 along this side. Let us think of the three scenarios separately greater than. So, what are the greater than scenarios? Let us take some examples a 1 a 2 and b 1 b 2. Let us say when a 1 a 2 is let us say uh, 0 1 and b b 1 b 2 is 0 0 then a is greater than b. So, when it is 1 0 b 1 b 2 is either 0 0 or 0 1 then also a is greater than b and a 1 a 2 is 1 1 b 1 b 2 is either 0 0 or 0 1 or 1 0 then also it is greater. So, there are 6 possible scenarios. So, see in the truth table I am shown this as 6 possible cells where gt 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 are marked because gt lt and eq will be all exclusive that is why I can show it on the same truth table equal to will be 0 0 equal to 0 0 0 1 equal to 0 1 1 1 equal to 1 1 1 0 equal to 1 0 and the remaining cells will all be less than. So, directly from this single truth table you can actually write down the expression for all of them like for the gt uh, the cubes will be one will be this, one will be this and the other will be these, this two. So, if you write down it will be this, this e q cannot be minimized any further there will be four terms with all containing four literals. For L t also you can combine this four, you can combine this two, you can combine this and this. So, there will be three terms right. So, a two bit comparator is also relatively easy to design you can do it in this way. Now, when we talk about a four bit comparator let us see suppose I want to design a four bit comparator there are two four bit numbers b 0 to b 3 a 0 to a 3 let us say. Let us denote or introduce a symbol called x i which is the equivalence of a i and b i that means x nor function that means x i will be 1 if a i and b i are equal. Now, with this notation we can directly write down the expressions for e q g t and l t you see a and b they will be equal if all corresponding bits are equal that means, x 3 is 1, x 2 is 1, x 1 is 1 and also x 0 is 1 just and of all 4. 
G 3 you see you think of the two numbers the number A and B. So, if you see that A is 1 that A 3 is 1 and B 3 is 0 then you need not have to see the other bits because irrespective of the other three bits if the most significant bit A is greater than B then always A will be greater A 3 B 3 bar. But if you find they are equal these two are equal 0 0 or 1 1 these two are equal then you need to see the next bit if this is 1 and this is 0. So, you see the first bit is equal and a 2 is 1 b 2 is 0 or the first two bits are equal a 1 is 1 b 1 is 0 or the first three bits are equal a 1 is 0 b 1 a 0 is 1 b, b 0 is 0. The LT is just the reverse instead of a 3 b 3 bar is a 3 bar b 3 is 0 1 they are equal and this they are equal then this they are equal then this same way you can straight away write down. So, you see for this kind of functional blocks you did not always have to construct the truth table to write down the expression you think mentally that what this block is supposed to do and you can functionally you can write down the switching expression directly this often we do for many of the functional blocks. So, with this we come to the end of this lecture on logic design uh, in our next lectures we shall be looking at various ways of representing boolean functions and some of the ways in which you can manipulate them. Thank you.